You can't help but be some angry. I've missed many funerals, many weddings, graduations. I was a high school principal at Clifton, Texas, and had lived there 10 years. Mickey taught fourth grade there at the same school district. Uh, she was the hometown girl. I like that side of school because I can know all the kids in the school by their first names. And in turn, they can know who we were by the way that we lived. I know also you and Mickey would take walks almost every day around town, and a lot of people I interviewed talked to me about that. That was some time where Mickey and I could just be together without the phone ringing or without us having to be somewhere. And we would laugh and talk about the day, funny things that happened. I would tease her about her, about her duck walk and go quack, quack, and she'd straighten her feet up and she'd tell me, well, at least I don't have a bunch of tough trailing me. And <laughs> uh, we would see people that we knew, and sometimes they would walk with us, and sometimes they did not. Uh, but it gave us time. We walked about three miles a day, and it gave us time to wind down and relax a little bit and get reconnected again, and that was neat. When all this happened, there was a, a big element of what I would call character assassination. And I'm just wondering if you can tell people what it's like to sit there and, and hear yourself described that was quite different than what your friends were saying. I think we have to first realize that a small town likes to believe in the authority. Not that they wanted to hear what they heard, but the fact that they were hearing it, then it caused a doubt. A doubt not only about my character, maybe about Mickey's character, but what did he really kill Mickey? And you sit there and you believe, you people lived with me for 10 years, how could you believe this? You've seen me every day, you saw Mickey every day, you know I'm not that way. Why would you think that? Can you tell me about learning that, that Robert Thorman had signed an affidavit saying that he was in fact incorrect in some of his testimony? Oh yes, I was uh, elated and humbled about the fact that it had to be difficult for him to admit that he was wrong. And I appreciated him doing that, um, hoping that his confession that he was wrong will help other people incarcerated in prison who had junk science that convicted them. But you also have to realize that he didn't have the proper training that he needed to do what he did and the fact that the court used him knowing that he did not have the proper training and then flaunted that as gospel as far as blood splatter stuff and they're still doing that. They, to this day, they don't want to admit that he was wrong. And how many years did other people in authority know that forensic evidence was wrong? And how long had they known it? And why are they fighting it so? Where is the truth? in Mickey's murder and in my conviction. And the, base, the bottom line is they're willing to sacrifice me or anyone else for conviction and they don't want to know the truth because the truth is not always popular. Because if we reveal the truth, which we're doing, then that tampers on someone else's hallowed ground and makes them look bad. And they've looked good for 30 something years and they've made me look like a real villain. And I'm not the villain, I'm a victim. Just like Mickey was. And it hurts. I, I think that you know that at one time the, the DA's office was also looking at you in regard to the other crime that had happened yes. in Clifton. I personally think that Dennis Dunlap killed Mickey. No, I do not think Mickey would go with him. I think he may have pursued her, and I think he saw an opportunity. He knew I was going to be gone. His friends knew I was going to be gone. I think when he told his ex-wife that he just could not be in prison, and that he committed suicide and hung himself, and he admitted to killing Judy Whitley, and he admitted to being with Mickey the night she was killed, I think that tells the story. And I don't think that anyone in law enforcement in Bosque County wanted to hear that side of what happened. 
because that was mean they made a terrible mistake with me and they were willing to sacrifice me for their own integrity and security. Can you talk about, as far as your incarceration, how long you've been incarcerated and just the basics of what you have missed out in the world because of that length of time? Okay, I've been incarcerated uh, 31 years and four months. Every day I wake up and I see the bars and I'm reminded of what's happened to Mickey and to me. I'm not happy about it, but it's not TDC's fault. So why should I come in here and be belligerent and disrespectful? I have a squeaky clean record. I don't involve myself with all the stuff that goes on around me and all the inmates know it. Uh, they respect that. It seems like everyone has always known that I was a teacher or principal and they come to me for, how do you spell so-and-so? Can you help me with this letter? And it just kind of gravitated to me helping them study for their GED and I would encircle them like a kindergarten class in front of my cell and it was enjoyable to do that because you can see the aha moments when they understood what was going on and I would have some that would come back to me and say, Joe, I passed the test. I'm wondering um, as far as what you missed the most from your life before this, what it is that, that you would like to go back to if you could. If I could go back, I would make Mickey go to Austin with me. I miss the uh, times with her and with my family, her family. Uh, I have respect for her family and they lost their someone they love. I understand that. I would just like for them to look for the truth and be open-minded about the truth. What do you want people to know, either about your case, about Mickey, about your quest for justice for both of you? Number one, Mickey was my soulmate. I miss her terribly. Secondly, this experience can happen to anybody in the United States at any time. Do not ever quit. If you're truly innocent, don't ever quit. Keep fighting it. Because the only way to correct a justice system is to keep fighting it and to bring out the warts and moles and everything else that are there that they can correct them. And it's not all, it's not perfect, but it's all we have. But we can't quit. We have to continue to work with it. 